My name is Timna Denwood and I'm in the final year of my PhD at the University of Manchester where I've spent the last few years researching various methods of participatory mapping. So today I'll be introducing you to my latest project which uses a novel sketch mapping tool to carry out a participatory mapping survey by post. Uh, hence the pun filled title which pleases me more than it should really. Um, the crux of this research uh, is really to see if we can get a PGIS or participatory GIS style data set from a paper based method. So as uh, Caitlin just touched on, with each type of participatory mapping, um, be it sort of PGIS, sketch mapping, metal, mental mapping, even whatever, uh, under various guises, there are pros and cons and different capabilities making different methods more suitable for certain research than others. So for example, um, with PGIS, you can get very spatially accurate data, sort of predominantly point-based from large populations, uh, but you may struggle to collect deeper, more personal narratives. Contrasting directly to something like mental mapping, uh, by which I mean drawing on a blank surface with no base map, um, which often opens up the possibility sort of to deeper, richer, kind of usually freehand data um, and works kind of hand in hand with interviews, but can be much more challenging to analyze. Um, as such, there are a number of often conflicting um, attributes to each method that need to be considered when selecting the right tool for the research. Um, a very well covered area where compromise often has to be made which again was really interesting just hearing, hearing just now this was highlighted in uh, Caitlin's uh, findings uh, is accessibility. So there are a number of accessibility issues when it comes to participatory, participatory mapping. Um, the big one being digital divides. So inequalities between those who have access to the internet or computer technologies and those who don't. Obviously, this is a very complex area uh, that's much covered in the literature with a multitude of factors and reasons. So I won't go into too much detail, um, but essentially in sort of the context of this research, there's often an assumption by decision makers that access to computers is universal. Um, and this leads to an imbalance in those who can and cannot be heard, particularly when it comes to local planning issues where the public opinion is requested. In considering a non-digital method um, to collect the same data, participation is widened to those who may kind of not be able to access the digital. Um, however, as mentioned, these methods can usually be a bit more challenging in terms of analysis, um, as they'll always require some form of digitization, which can introduce researcher biases and slow down the process. So the aim of this research is really to see if we can have the best of both worlds um, by using a novel auto digitizing paper based tool which removes researcher bias and speeds up the process whilst allowing for more accessible participation. So paper to GIS, uh, which was developed by uh, Johnny Huck was the tool used in this research. The figure here explains the whole process. Um, so figure one, it's just an A3 reference, paper reference map uh, which participants draw directly onto. Um, following sort of specific instructions regarding notation, as in to draw lines or uh, for one question or shade areas for another question. Um, sort of rather than having total free reign. This is then photographed, um, including the QR code and a specific border, which is figure two, then extracted and transformed to correct sort of for any distortion taking the photograph, figure three. Uh, then the map's extracted, and then this is followed by the markup, so which is the difference between the base map and the edited map. And then, uh, which starts figure five, and then it's output as a vector GIS data file uh, for analysis. I've made it sound quite complicated, uh, but it's really just a matter of taking a photograph of a map and running it through the software, which is open source, uh, and then doing whatever analysis you fancy. Um, so to test this tool, uh, I once more used Arla, Arla Bauer and Battersea as a case study. So if any of you were at my presentation last year at JISRUC, um, this might be ringing one or two bells. Um, it's so where my whole PhD has been based really up in the Alt Hebrides. So the Isles kind of have a unique opportunity to explore ways to improve kind of accessibility um, as they have a slightly older population 
who could benefit from this uh, and produced a local energy plan to assess their future energy needs, um, which identified electricity production and active transport as two areas of concern. So the questions my research was asking was whether, uh, sorry, so was where residents would not want to be able to view a wind turbine from and where they would like to see new footpaths. So obviously nothing went to plan this last year. Uh, I was supposed to be going back up to the Isles and doing again sort of walking interviews and uh, focus groups. Um, hence the research this year was instead done by post. So it's meant having thousands of sheets of paper filling up my living room for quite a few weeks. Um, but these have been posted out kind of two A3 base maps, consent form of you know instru specific instructions and a return uh, envelope as well as a questionnaire to uh, a number of households on the Isles of Barra. So I got 35 back um, over a period of a few months, kind of fairly even gender split, uh, but significantly older residents. I will really whiz quickly through results because I see I'm going to run out of time. Um, so this is the map where people didn't want to be able to see wind turbines from. Uh, so this has been through the PaperGIS software and this is the immediate output with the dark area showing where multiple people's views were overlaid. Um, there, was a, there was a number actually, I think it was uh, 12 would be happy to see a wind turbine anywhere. So bears aren't included. So this is actually only 19 participants uh, data. So to ensure it's comparable to a PGIS style data set um, or a PGIS data set, I used my research from the previous year so to compare the two. So uh, on the right, I've now applied view sheds to uh, all the different areas that the participants provided. And you can see sort of, and on, sorry, and on the left um, is the PGIS data from asking the same question the year before. So I've, because I can't point to things, I've put some circles around all the bits that are the same. So even though it'll be different people and more people for the map on the right, there are a number of similarities uh, that can be seen where people had sort of the most uh, opinions on where they wouldn't want to see a wind turbine. Second question was about where they would like new footpaths. Um, so again, the darker routes show where multiple people have the same uh, answer. Once again, through the uh, paper GIS uh, software. Um, they also kind of provided feedback uh, on the questionnaire. Um, stating that they wanted, you know, the roads to circumnavigate the um, the road on the island for, sorry, the paths to circumnavigate the road uh, for safety concerns, but also cutting across the island for kind of more scenic routes. Again, to compare it to uh, PGIS. So on the left, we have the digital uh, version of this question being asked and the paper version on the right. Um, and you can see they're really, really similar again, some slight differences in the center of the island, but ultimately, opening up the middle of the island and going around that road um, for safety purposes. Despite having to kind of conduct the research by post, uh, which obviously meant that, you know, you lose out a bit on those kind of personal interactions, uh, which you have with people in focus groups and things, uh, we were still able to get a good amount of data back and, you know, for it to be comparable to the digital version that was done the year before. Um, the maps presented make it clear that using this kind of using paper to GIS, um, you can get a data set that's comparable. Um, so it could either be, you know, so it could be used as an alternative, as a more accessible version of a uh, digital kind of uh, mapping platform, or equally, you could use it hand in hand with a PGIS system and then combine the data sets and it would be completely well, it wouldn't, you, we wouldn't really notice the difference basically. Um, so not only does doing things this way remove the researcher bias, um, as there's sort of no external input in the digitization process, it is purely exactly, you know, what has been drawn on that map by those participants. Um, it makes things a whole heap faster rather than having to manually digitize things as well. Um, but yeah, so it could be used as more of a sort of a toolkit almost with other um, PGIS systems um, remotely or in person um, to kind of improve uh, improve democracy, I guess, in sort of the decision making process by enabling more people um, from kind of broader backgrounds to join in 
whether or not they have access and the ability to use computer technologies. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, any questions, do let me know. I whiz through the end, so I might have a little more time um, if you want me to go back and explain the results anymore or anything, uh, let me know. Uh, we got a nod from Alan for that. So yeah, I think let's, let's go back and uh, have a little bit more results. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll go back to the view should one. So this was the sort of, this one was the one I was most unsure of. So the original result, uh, here we go. So this was the- You can, can see your mouse pointer if you want to use that to point. Oh, good. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I need to spend hours drawing circles. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this one, these are the uh, polygons exactly as extracted from using paper to GIS from the paper maps. Um, hence being sort of irregular and you can sort of see where people might have kind of scribbled to shade in. Um, but an already sort of, from this, it's not immediately comparable to the PGIS data set. Um, but when you then add the view sheds, because the, so to explain, the PGIS system enabled people to click on a point and it immediately uh, gave them a view shed and they could move that around and remove the view shed if they didn't like what it showed them um, or, you know, leave it as is. Um, so that's why I converted this into view sheds as well, so that they were directly comparable. Um, otherwise it's just gonna people sort of not knowing where, I mean, uh, yeah, so otherwise it's just sort of the point rather than the, um, the view sheds. Um, so, oh, where's my little circles again? There we go. <laughs> Save me using my mouse. So there's really clear areas that were really, it was really interesting because it was different, again, different people um, who, I mean, there's a bit more of a dominance up sort of on the Northwest of the island which I'm assuming was because there was more people from those areas. So when I initially went and did the PGIS survey, they were in-person workshops and um, one was on Battersea, which is the South Island, one was in Castle Bay, which is in the Black Circle, and one on North Bay, which is in the Green Circle. So there wasn't a workshop on the other side of the island because it's not particularly well, I mean, there's not sort of a, a central kind of residential area or you know village hall type thing for that, that to have happened in. Uh, hence it being done in those three locations. So that's why they're a little more kind of dominant um, and this area doesn't appear. Um, but yeah, but there it was, so it was really interesting getting the, the view shed results and seeing sort of, especially kind of the line across Vattersea kind of from east to west really, really strongly. People absolutely don't want any wind turbines down on there. There was an element in sort of the feedback that part of that is because it's it's incredibly beautiful you know it's all white sand beaches um you can see whales and seals and all sorts and eagles um but also there's not the infrastructure because it's just connected by this tiny little causeway there's very very poor infrastructure already um for electricity and such like so it's it's a very knowledgeable community on the island in terms of sort of their energy needs um, in terms of the, the two groups, did you say that it was different respondents for both sets? Is that correct? So there's nobody did both? I mean, I, I don't know. So um, the, the focus groups on the island were anonymous. I didn't get any name data. Uh, mm. And these are now sort of the, the post responses are now anonymous. I got consent forms which did have names on. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. The demographic is similar, okay. but I got, when I went to the Ars, I only got 22 participants. Um, so this one, I had 35, or well, 35 so far. Um, yeah. So okay. it, there's, there's at least 13 people who are different. <laughs> yeah, cool. Did you get any feedback whether people, because uh, presumably they knew originally it was going to be a workshop, but it changed post. Did you get any feedback on they preferred the postal, they didn't, or, or the kind of more in-depth in stuff? So they didn't know it was going to be a workshop. Okay, one. right, yeah. <laughs> they weren't too disappointed. <laughs> um, but I did get feedback, yes, I should have said, 
uh, one of the kind of questions on the short questionnaire was kind of asking for reasons uh, for their choices on the maps and then what they thought of collecting data this way. And a couple of people did say, you know, this is great because I don't need to leave my home um, and would be helpful or would be useful for the older, older residents um, because, yeah, for the, for the same reason, because, you know, not so confident with computers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, um, so that, that, so that feedback was there, yeah, which is really good to see. But they, they kind of really grasped the point of it. One question uh, from Duncan. Uh, in the view shared images, what do the numbers in the legend mean? So. Uh, they are the number of um, view sheds that are overlaid. Okay, so he says, are they numbers of this light? So it's the areas people don't want the wind turbine. So nine would be nine people who don't want it there. 